Welcome in, welcome in. Welcome in. I'm your brother in the faith, Minister Monitor of Macklemore. Minister Monitor of Macklemore. Amen, amen. Welcome in. Um, I have a message to the body of Christ, the body of believers, the ecclesia, to kind of pull the scriptures and encourage the body of Christ on today. I'll be your sphere, minister of one and two of Macklemore. Amen, amen. I want to inspire the body of Christ, the Ecclesia, the Great Assembly, Ecclesia, the church. Amen, amen. Uh, reinforce scriptures and uh, earn sharpens iron. So welcome in. The title of my message is It is I, Be Not Afraid. It is I, Be Not Afraid. Amen, amen. Audience, listeners, in your lifetime, have you ever been afraid? What thing or place made you afraid? I know if we trust Christ Jesus and do his will, be in his will, we do not, we do not have to be afraid of anything. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 16 through 20. And when evening was now come, his disciples went down into the sea. And entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark. And Jesus would not come to them. Jesus was, was not come to them. And the sea arose by great re reason, by reason of a great wind that blew. So they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs. They see Jesus walking on the water and drawing nigh into the ship, they were afraid. But he said unto them, it is I, be not afraid. Okay, so welcome in. We just read uh, John chapter 6, verse 16 through 20 is our main scripture, it's our anchor scripture. <laughs> Uh, my title is, It is I, Be Not Afraid. Amen, amen. After the disciples saw the miracles Jesus did with the laws, their faith was tried by a storm at sea. Well, that's something we should all be able to relate to as Christians. After God gave us the first miracle of being born again, we went on our journey with him, following him. Then soon after came trials and tribulations to build our faith so that we had to trust God to bring us through the troubles. God can't really make us without trouble. I mean, we had to trust that it is I, Jesus the Christ, and we would not be afraid. In verse 18 of chapter 6 John chapter 6 verse 18 the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew I, never, I believe that relates to all believers with the storms of life we will all have to experience as followers of Jesus Christ in saints we the saints following Jesus Christ The storm that blew, the great wind that blew at sea in verse 18 of John chapter 6, I believe relates to all believers with the storms of life that we all will have to experience as followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. The storms of life comes the storms of, of life come to develop our faith. Our faith will be tried by fire. We as we as followers of Christ. 
and Christians really go through the fire. That's First Peter, reference First Peter chapter one verse seven. The fire manifested itself in John six, came in the form of a great wind that blew at sea. In the midst of the great wind blowing, here comes Jesus Christ walking on the water saying, it is I, be not afraid. God will always show up on time in the midst of our storms of life. Just when we think we cannot handle the storm and trial and tribulation, the storm and the trial and tribulation, then comes God. God will then show up with another miracle walking on the water to save us and encourage us, his people. We as believers need to get angry in Jesus Christ, having and building faith in him daily. With faith, we are reminded that it is I, Jesus Christ, and be not afraid. As we continue to maintain faith, you know, be not afraid of anything, you know. As we continue to maintain faith, we, we, we should not be afraid of anything because we are maintaining faith daily. This is he, the same Jesus Christ that brought and bought us out of darkness into, and, and brought us into the marvelous light. This is the same Jesus Christ, the I am, the God of Abraham, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We should, as followers of Christ, should never become afraid. We as believers need to get anchored in Jesus Christ. We as believers need to get anchored in Jesus Christ having and building faith in him daily. It is either Christ. It is, I, it is I, Jesus Christ, be not afraid, because I'm already at an elevated place on a holy mountain praying and making intercession for believers. That our faith fail not. Christ Jesus is even now on God's holy mountain at the right hand of all power, praying that our faith fail not as saints. We have confidence while going through any storm. And while great winds are blowing in our, in our life, we have confidence. God knew we were going to have storms of life while going through life, while he remains on the mountain. So he sent down for us in, in the New Testament era his Holy Ghost, his Holy Spirit to comfort us. Saints receive the promise of the Holy Ghost. Saints receive that. The comforter. John chapter 15 verse 26. God has sent something himself, his spirit, so we would never be afraid in life. We should never be afraid because Jesus Christ is a miracle worker. He is the bread of life. And because he is the bread of life, he can provide bread for 5,000 people easily. And there be food left over when at first there was very little. When there is only a little food and lots of people, God, would, God Jesus Christ, can multiply. Then the need can be met for all the people that want help. The body of Christ be not, body of Christ be not afraid. Body of Christ be not afraid. A famine in the land. Be not afraid when in hunger. God will God will fill us and provide for us his saints. Peace I leave you with. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. 
give eye unto you. Let not, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Bible explicitly tells us, be not afraid of death, sickness, or, or tribulation. Scriptures warns us, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hellfire. Mm -hmm. reference, reference chapter uh, 10 of Matthew, 10 and 28 of Matthew, when the Bible says that we should fear God, this means to know and live by the commandments of God as, it, as the divine authority over all things. The biblical message, be not afraid, relates to worldly and, and spiritual forces outside of the kingdom of heaven. We should not fear the earthly threats of violence or persecution or demonic spiritual forces of temptation and despair. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and Omega of life itself. Who defeated death and the devil, who defeated death, the grave, and the devil by his holy resurrection. Let us live by faith and not in fear. Rejoice in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When thou goest, household faith, body of Christ, when thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and see horses and chariots and people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Behold, God is, is my salvation. I will trust. I will be not afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. Beloved in the body of Christ, be not afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Beloved in the body of Christ, be not afraid because God the Most High shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall be thy, tr thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Let us put on, put, let us put out trust. Let, let us put our trust in Christ and never become afraid. We will never be afraid because God our Father knows and understands our situation and whatever we're going through. We are worth more than many sparrows. The hairs on our head are all numbered. Our Father God knows what we, what we are in need of. Even before we ask, amen. Be not afraid of men also. No matter what the earthly man has said and plotted to do against the believers and saints. Do the will of God anyway. Despite what man thinks. Despite the persecution that comes from this Christian lifestyle. Anyone who plans to live a godly life must suffer persecution. The things of God are foolishness to man who is perishing, the earthly man who is perishing, but to the people of, of God who will be saved, Christ preached, and the message of the cross is, is the very power of God. Amen. Throughout his 26-year pontificate, St. John Paul used phrases, do not be afraid. John Paul, John Paul II of the Catholic Church reflected on the phrase in the book Crossing the Threshold of Hope and explained that it was the Holy Spirit who inspired him to say those words. Be not afraid. He said the words be not afraid in St. Peter's Square. Then he continues to the reflection explains why he will often return to the phrase during his many years as Pope. 
do not be afraid. In this eyes of Christ, be not afraid. Is what I'm trying to articulate. Your brother in the faith more than back on more. It is eyes of Christ. It is eyes of Jesus Christ. Be not afraid. Uh, amen. Uh, Christians should not be afraid of any storm that buffet them, for they have hope. They have their hope in Jesus Christ, who came to save the world from darkness. We know that God is in control, and that He is love, and He is our. And because that He, because He is love, all fears shall shall disappear. Amen, amen. God is love, and, and if we truly understand that, we no longer have fear of the present world situation, even if it grows darker. God is love, he is in control. Saints of the Most High God, Saints of the Most High God, be not afraid, amen, be, be not afraid. Whatever's coming in the future, be not afraid of the evil report. We have another report. Amen. We have another report. Be not afraid. It is either Christ, be not afraid. So uh, that's my message. Uh, I want to uh, invite non-believers who listen to this message. I want to open the door to the kingdom, open the door of the salvation, which is made an experience to uh, believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth. So if you want to become a part of the kingdom uh, after listening to that message, uh, God has been dealing with you already. Uh, amen. You can repeat this prayer with me. Uh, Father God, thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. He says in the scriptures, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ, I call upon you now. I rep repent for my sins, past, present, and future. Wash me, make me clean. Purge me with hyssop. Made me clean, made me whiter than snow. Created me a clean heart, renew the righteous spirit in me. Uh, I want, I want to make you head over my life. I, I want to make you the head over my life, Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't want to be afraid of anything. Show me, teach me, and, and teach me the gospel line upon line, precept upon precept. Show me how not to be afraid of anything. I will not be afraid of anything anymore now because I, I'm making you Lord over my life now. You're the Lord of my life. I will turn from sin. I will go through the sanctification process of turning from sin. I will go through the process of becoming a mature adult. No longer will I be, be afraid because I am born again now. I confess Christ with my mouth, the confession, uh, and, and believe in my heart that you are the Lord, Jesus Christ. You're the only begotten Son of God. Fully God, fully man, God in the flesh. Amen. Okay, so if you pray that prayer, uh, it shall be done for you. It is so. Amen. Oh. Um, I'm just on the internet now, um, dropping the seed, planting the seed, and possibly watering the seed of what was already, which you probably already know. Of. If you first, if you first now hearing the gospel message, uh, being evangelized, you know, I'm planting the seed or either watering the seed. Iron sharpens iron, so I pray you are inspired. Kingdom people stay inspired. Keep the faith. Amen. That's my message. Amen.